Howdy folks, John here. Been a while since I've done a DIY repair video. That changes today, unfortunately. Not really looking forward to this job. Can't get the old riding mower started. And this is a common problem with residential riding mowers that run Briggs & Stratton Intec engines. And I've already traced the problem to a bad decompression cam. What'll happen is you go to turn the engine over and it bogs down like the battery's dead. But I'm going to show you exactly what it's doing, how to diagnose it between a bad battery, even a bad starter, and of course fixing it. This will be the second time I've had to repair this issue on this engine since I've owned the mower. It's got about 320 hours on it now. The first one crapped out at 120 hours. So this one's lasted almost 200 hours, but uh, yeah, it's a big problem and I don't think they've really fixed the problem. In fact, uh, it must be so prevalent that uh, you can't even find Briggs and Stratton camshafts. They're always on back order. So we had to get an aftermarket one, not thrilled about that. Uh, I've read it's hit and miss with these things, but we're gonna see. Let's get into this thing to see what it's doing so you can determine if you've got the same problem and the same headache. Just gonna try to start it. So the starter's trying to turn it over, but as soon as it hits compression, it, it stops. Suspect the battery first, because that's always the most likely cause. You know, check all your wiring. I'm just gonna show you how I check my batteries. But one way you can get these started and have a pretty good idea if it is a decompression cam is if you just manually turn the engine and get it past the top of the compression stroke. You'll feel it get really tight as, it's, as the piston's under compression, and then after top dead center, it gets loose. Now, if we can start it now, because what'll happen is there's no more compression right away, and the engine and the starter will build up just enough momentum to get it through the compression stroke. And I see it hesitated there, but it was just enough to get it started. And that's usually a good way to tell if the battery's still good and your starter's still good and it's a decompression cam problem. We'll also check under the valve cover because there's another way you can determine this by checking under there. So first thing I'm going to do is check the open circuit battery voltage. And we're sitting around 12.5, 12.49 volts. Fully charged would be 12.6, so that looks pretty good. Of course, that's just checking an unloaded battery. That's a pretty poor way of checking a battery condition because we don't know if the battery is sulfated, which would still give you good voltage, but you know you wouldn't get any current coming out of it when it's called for. So what I did is I got my vehicle battery and I jump started it and same thing. So with a good vehicle battery it did the exact same thing. It stalled out on the compression stroke and wouldn't start. Check all your battery connectors course if any of the terminals are loose either on the battery or down at the solenoid here the starting solenoid where the big wire comes into it check the nuts same on the bottom of the starter right down here where it bolts onto the starter if any of those are loose the same type of thing could happen increased resistance through the loose connector but those are all tight so the next step in the diagnosis here is to pull the valve cover off that's it right there and we're going to check the intake uh, valve to see if we can feel and see the decompression. Before you pull it off though, on the top of the valve cover on all these Intec engines, it will actually show you the model of the engine. Now, this is a 33 series. So yeah, definitely <laughs> a known problem on these. And you just want to have that uh, number for when you're ordering your camshaft. I think there's only one or two different ones don't quote me on that, but it'll show when you're looking at your different camshafts for the Intec engines, which uh, engine series they're for. Right, we've got our valve cover off. As you can see, last time I adjusted the valves, I just used RTV instead of the gasket. We've got a new gasket though with the uh, new kit. Our intake valve is the one in the bottom. So here's the intake valve push rod. Here's the intake valve in the rocker arm. There's our exhaust. Safety first. Battery's disconnected, spark plug has been disconnected, and spark plug has been removed so we can turn the engine, 
very easily by hand. Now if you're really lucky, this might just be a valve adjustment problem. If your intake valve is really loose, the decompression won't uh, work because the I'll show you how that works on the new camshaft. And that might be all it is, is valve adjustment. I doubt it. Valve adjustment would generally tend to cause this to become worse over time. It wouldn't just stop. And the symptom on mine was it started fine on one mow. It was actually out at the RC flying field. I took it out there on the trailer, mowed the lawn out there, went to put it back on the trailer, couldn't start it. So it was an immediate failure. It didn't happen over time. Uh, if you want to check your valve clearance, get your manual out. There's different specs uh, on the specific engine. On this one, our intake valve clearance is three to five thou. So just get out your feeler gauge, get your engine to top dead center. When you know you're at top dead center, you know both of your valves should have a little bit of play in them. Exhaust valve always has a little bit more. So here's our three thousandth feeler gauge and we'll put it between the rocker arm and the tappet. Just a little bit of drag there. So no problems there. We're definitely looking at a yeah, decompression cam and the way to tell for sure is just feel the push rod as you're turning the engine and if the decompression is working you'll feel it and see it click. It, it'll ride up on the little decompression lobe and then drop back down but that's not happening. It's really smooth. There's, there's no drop, no click, nothing. So we're pulling the engine out. Like I said, it's not bad enough that uh, this is such a common problem. The fact that you can't even get a factory replacement part is ridiculous and that we have to resort to aftermarket, which as I said, is hit and miss. You know, I wouldn't be half surprised if this thing broke right away, but uh, well, we'll see. So anyway, these kits, they're about, the aftermarket kits are about half the price of the OEM Briggs kits. And they come with two new tappets. They come with a gasket set, so the sump crankcase gasket, and then a new valve cover gasket. And they also come with a couple of new seals. And then, of course, the camshaft itself. I'll have links down in the description to this thing. And again, these are fairly universal for the entire 33 series engines, and I think the 31s as well. But uh, this is the little doodad that breaks. This little uh, sprung weighted arm. And in my last one, the actual arm broke, but I know the pin can also break. How this works, this is the uh, intake cam lobe, this is the exhaust. But on the intake, let's just get one of these tappets out. We'll zoom in, hopefully we can see this. Focus, you little bugger. But in its sprung condition, resting position, you'll see this little pin has a little, you know, it's causing a little bump. And when the tappet rides over that, you know, it's lifting that tappet a little ways off the cam. So it's opening up the intake uh, valve a little bit just as it's coming into its compression stroke to uh, reduce the pressure in the cylinder and that's how it decompresses. And then what happens is once the engine has fired and is starting up and the camshaft comes up to sufficient speed, centrifugal force pulls this little weighted ear out of the way and it rotates that pin. So now the pin is on the flat so there's no more lift for that tappet. It's a piss poor design, like I said, very weak system. So that's how you diagnose the decompression problem and the camshaft issue. So now we've got to get the oil drained out of this beastie and pull it off of the mower. That's really the kind of the heaviest job of this whole process. So that's it for the four bolts that we had to remove from the bottom. So the four that are holding the engine to the frame and then this big long one is just going through the pulley here. Sorry, the lighting's so bad. Just thought I'd share a couple of removal tips. Of course, this is going to vary between uh, brand and machine. Here's the top of our pulley. 
As far as wiring goes, all I had to disconnect was the uh, power wire going to the starter from the solenoid. I, of course, first disconnected the power cable on the battery. Here is the main plug going to the motor, which had to be unclipped. And then the fuel line just had to come off of the fuel filter here, capped off the top of the fuel filter so no dirt gets in it. Same with the hose going into the engine. And then the only other thing you have to remove is the throttle cable. And the little tip here is put some kind of marks on it uh, so you know how it's mounted onto the side of the carburetor so you don't lose your uh, throttle cable to carburetor adjustment. So I've just got the engine sitting upright so the valve cover is at the top here. First thing we have to do is remove the two push rods. The little rocker arms, they've got a set screw to hold the uh, bolt tight on them. So you just have to loosen off that little set screw. It's a T20 Torx. And then these will either back out by hand, easy enough, or they use a 5 8 inch wrench to loosen them off. And you just want them loose enough so you can uh, pivot the rocker arm out of the way. Like so. And then you can lift your push rods out. The exhaust push rod is the steel one, and the intake is aluminum. So just make sure you don't get those mixed up. And then on the top of each valve, there's a little tappet. So make sure you take those off and mark them. So I'm going to put this one in a little bag that says intake, and this one in a little baggie that says exhaust, so I don't get them mixed up. Shouldn't matter. I like to keep everything matched with what it came off of. So now I can take the oil pump off of the sump. The sump is the actual thing that we are removing. So this whole big section on the bottom of the engine, you have to take all these bolts off. It'll slide off. But we've got to take the oil pump out first so we can get the oil pump shaft out. I'm just cleaning this off just so no dirt will get in there. And it's a five, these are five sixteenths. Now before pulling this cover off, I'm actually going to mark it. So I know the orientation when I put it back on. There's our oil pump, and I'm just going to put the oil pump cam on this plate so I know which way it's oriented for when it goes back in. And then we will pull the oil pump drive shaft out. There's an O-ring in there. It may come out with the plate, it may not. This one seems to be in there okay, so I think we're okay. I'm going to turn the engine now on its top. In like sin, now it gets fun. So it's just zipping out the bolts that hold the sump on. These are half inch. Uh, you can do this with a, uh, you know, just a, a ratchet, but I'm just using an impact. Just makes it go a little bit quicker. Just make sure you've got it in reverse because these strip out really easy. They are all the same length, so you don't have to worry about uh, matching the right bolt with the right hole. Now well, this is probably glued on pretty good with the gasket. Just got to give it some love taps. You can tap on the edges. Don't try to pry anything in between. Probably need a bigger hammer. There we go. I see no decompression cam. Oh, but I see parts of it lying in the engine. Yuck. Okay, so here's our camshaft. And there's bits of that thing lying in the bottom of the engine. So we're going to have to get that all out. Got to take the gasket all off, clean that up. That's a bugger. Plastic scraper will work. Uh, but the next thing to get out of here is the governor. That's this little doodad here. And it comes out as one piece, or at least try to, because the last thing you want to do is have this thing 
come all out. There's a little arm here. There's the, that's actually what rotates the governor. As these weights spread out as this spins, this pivots, and that's what governs the speed. But we just want to take this whole assembly out, hold it. It just lifts off of the camshaft end there. And then put this someplace safe. And then the camshaft should just lift out. Easy breezy. And as you can see, no decompression on there at all. The pins come out, it's just destroyed itself. There's chunks of it in here. Oh my God. And that's flopping around inside the engine. I can see the spring here, the pins down here. Oh, look at this. Unbelievable. So I'm going to have to go in there with a magnet and get all that out. And, you know, all this stuff was sitting at the bottom of the sump. So I've got to clean the bottom of the sump out. I can see little bits of metal fragments in here. So, you know, when this happens, you kind of want to get to it sooner rather than later. You know, chances are it's okay, but you don't want that metal stuff flopping around in the engine. You know, you could destroy the entire engine if you kept running it with all this gunk flopping about. Piss poor design. Unbelievable. Briggs and Stratton used to make good stuff, but it's just crap now like everything else. So once you get all the gasket material cleaned off, that was quite a big job actually. I just used some 3M Scotch-Brite pad. Just very lightly went over it after I removed most of it with the uh, plastic scraper. I've inspected everything. I've dumped all the oil out, cleaned everything, went through with a magnet, a uh, couple of big chunks of that uh, decompression arm. Other than that, everything looks okay. I used my inspection scope to check the uh, cylinder bore liner. So the only damage I can actually find is right here. Something got jammed. Come on. There you go. We can see it pretty good there. Probably when the crankshaft was coming around, it pinched the arm in there. That's probably what shattered it. Other than that, everything's good, so we can put it back together now. And here's all the shrapnel I dug out of the engine. What's left of the decompression cam or arm? Fubar doesn't quite do it justice. We'll leave this one with a little bit of flowchart entertainment. Pause and peruse at your leisure. Yeah, and you just want to make sure everything's more or less spotless inside. Both on the inside of the engine, as well as inside the sump. So I've decided to reuse the original lifters. They didn't look worn at all. And those are OEM. I didn't see any point to put those new ones in that came with the kit. Here's our camshaft. I don't know if the camera's picking this up, but there's two alignment dimples. There's one on the new camshaft teeth, and there's one on the crank teeth as well. It's right there. You just want to make sure that dimple is somewhere on this side, so when you put your camshaft in, you get those two dimples lining up. I'm just going to lube this up with some oil because it's dry. And we will lube up this miserable decompression arm thing, whatever it is. Complete pain in the butt crap design. And now we will put this in, get our teeth lined up. There we go. I also put some oil on all the gear teeth. And we will put 
put the governor in. Goes without saying, when you put the governor on, just make sure the teeth of it mesh with the teeth of the camshaft. Fire our gasket on. And then the only other thing I'm going to do right now, I'm going to put some grease around the top of the crankshaft output. So when we slide the uh, base or sump on, the seal is well lubricated. I'm also going to grease the inside of that seal. Just make sure you don't get the wires stuck under there. So now you're just going to fire all your 10 bolts in. Here is a torque sequence for them and the actual torque specs. I'll fire a photo of this up on the video right now and you can peruse it at your whim. So it's 220 inch pounds uh, or 18 foot pounds or 25 Newton meters. I've only got metric uh, torque wrenches and I'm going to do it in two stages. So I'm not going to torque it right down to 25 right off the bat. I'm going to go 12 and then 25. So, so I'm just going to first crank them down in sequence by hand. All torqued up. I should mention if you want to put on some new thread lock you can. So all that's left is the pump which we've got down here and I've just kept it in the same orientation. So nothing has moved. I'm just going to drop it down in here. And there we go. And we will put our plate back on. Just going to wipe this off. a little oil on here, line up our mark. I've put anti-seize compound on the three little screws. They were a little bit tight getting out steel into aluminum. I'm always a little concerned about that. Probably wouldn't have to, but never hurts. In the home stretch here, folks. So before I put in the um, push rods and get the uh, valves adjusted, I just want to turn the engine over by hand. So I'm just turning the top of the uh, fan cover and turning the crankshaft. Just make sure everything's nice and smooth, nothing's binding. No funny noises or anything. So somewhat convinced everything's put back together correctly. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to just put a little dab of oil on the top of each valve stem. And then we are going to put our little tappets back on. Remember we've got these marked intake and exhaust. And I'm also going to put a dab of oil on the top of those. And we'll put our push rods in. Again, the aluminum push rod is for the intake, which is the one closest here, the bottom. There's a little wear mark on the top, it's shiny. That's uh, up top here. I probably should oil the base, even though there's probably oil on the bottom of those tappets in there. And I'll do the same with the exhaust rod. With both push rods in, we can put our rocker arms back on top here. Just rotate them on. Again, make sure those little tappets didn't pop out of place. Now these are still really loose. What we want to do now is find top dead center again. So I'm going to rotate the engine. That's not it. Under. There we go. 
Now I'm not entirely sure why they suggest this, but we're at top dead center now, but they say to adjust the valves in the manual, you want the piston to be a quarter inch down from top dead center. I'm not really too sure why. I've measured it both ways and the feeler gauges are the same, but we're going to go with what's in the manual. If anyone knows for sure why that is, please leave a comment. So we're just going to rotate the engine. So this goes down about a quarter inch. There we go. Again, check your manual what your intake and exhaust valve clearance should be. On this specific engine, they want three to five thou on the intake. I'm going to go four, five to seven thou on the exhaust. I'm going to go six. Yeah, so we've got our four thou. And I'm just going to put it between the rocker arm and the top of the valve. And then I'm just going to tighten this by hand until I feel some drag there. Don't want it so tight that you can't move it, but you want it, you want a little bit of drag. So I'm just going to leave that in there. I'm going to get our wrench on here. Told it again, this is 5 eighths. Don't move that. And then we're going to torque down this T20. And then we're going to tighten this T20. Set screw. Don't have to McGill it. Perfect. Okay, and I'll do the same thing with the exhaust. Tighten it down, hand tight, just so there's some drag there. A little more. Nice. Hold that in position so it doesn't move and tighten down the little set screw on top. Perfect. Before dropping the engine back in the mower, I'm just gonna lube up the uh, output shaft here with some grease just so there's uh, no chance of that pulley rusting onto here over time. Be very careful, this keyway is knife sharp. Don't know how well this is gonna show up, but I've got the keyway in that pulley. Come on, you can just see it, but I've got it oriented towards the front and I've got the keyway of the output shaft to the front of the motor so hopefully it'll just slide in famous last word so refitting the engine is just a reverse process of taking it apart went really well make sure you get all your electrical connectors back together spark plug in spark plug wire all that good stuff fit the fuel lines and the throttle cable the batteries back hooked up filled with oil it's go time let's see if it starts So, <laughs> it worked. So if you've got a riding mower or anything with a Briggs & Stratton Intech engine and you've got a decompression issue, hopefully this showed you the steps involved so you can tackle it yourself. As I said at the beginning, it's not an overly difficult job, but it's certainly time consuming. And hopefully you also have an appreciation why the shops quote several hundred dollars for it. And what I would recommend now uh, is to run it for a while and then do another oil change, at least if you've got the foobard shrapnel that uh, we saw in this engine where the, uh, you know, the decompression arm and pin just disintegrated and grenaded. Oh, another question I get asked a lot is, uh, how do I keep this thing so clean? You know, it's 10 years old. Uh, it's really simple. I don't wash it that often, maybe once, twice a year. Uh, but after every mow, uh, when I'm blowing the sidewalks off, I'll get the leaf blower and uh, give this thing a blow job. And it's amazing how that 30 second uh, process will keep your mower looking fairly new. Thanks for watching folks and until next time, happy DIY.